Hey guys, welcome to a new video. As you could probably tell from that thumbnail, my 48 inch OLED is here. Let's talk about that. Well, actually, I don't have that much to say about it yet. I've only had it for a few hours myself, but I'm just really excited, so I wanted to make a video about it. Um, it's a LG OLED CX or C10 model, the 48 inch version. And uh, I'll show you a closer up picture uh, in a minute. And well, I intend to use it as my desktop monitor, as I told you in one of my latest Queen Box episodes. So it's a 3840 by 2160, um, 60 or 120 hertz screen because it supports HDMI 2.1. Now my current PC is a Ryzen 3900X, 32 gigabytes of memory, lots of SSD storage, and a GTX 1080. Now the 1080 only goes up to HDMI 2.0B and actually doesn't have the G-Sync update that the RTX 20 series does have. That means I'm a bit limited to what I can do, but it's able to run 3840 by 2160 with 60 frames per second and normal 8-bit colors with 444 chroma. What does that all mean? Basically, it's able to uh, process the normal signal a normal monitor would get to, and there's no issue with HDMI 2 unless you want to go to a higher refresh rate than that. Now, as I said, I've only had this uh, TV monitor, whatever you want to call it, for a few hours myself. And I just wanted to make this video because I wanted to ask you, what would you like to see? I have this thing now, I have it hooked up to my 1080. I plan on upgrading to a 3080 or 3080 Ti in the future, but that's going to have to wait a few months. So yeah, what would you like me to see or test with the current setup I have? Normal desktop work has been fine. It's it, uh, fine. It's been great. Picture quality looks excellent and it's really awesome during gaming. But I also intend to use this thing for normal desktop usage. And there uh, you have to watch things like text and, well, as I said, 444 Chroma, but that's working fine. And text was a little bit of an issue at the beginning, but once I got all the settings dialed in, I think it looks excellent. Now, a lot of it has to do with the distance from uh, the screen to you. Currently, I have a desk that is 80 centimeters deep, but the stand of the monitor that it comes with is also about 20 centimeters deep, so it's 20 centimeters forward from the wall. So for me, to, for the screen to me is only 60 centimeters. And quite frankly, that's too short. There's two reasons for that. A, the screen is very big, so you have to move your head a lot. And that, I haven't found that to be a big problem yet. But B, uh, the resolution is actually too low for that because you're 60 centimeters away from a 4K screen, but this 4K screen is really big. And if you have a 27 inch 4K screen, like my other monitor, that's fine, everything's really crisp. But at 48 inches, pixels actually become too big, or at least I notice the individual pixels and it doesn't look like a uniform hole anymore. Now, this is another kick under my ass to get my ultimate overkill disc finished because that will give me 20 centimeters more desk space, so one meter in total from the wall. And, well, hold on. I also bought uh, this thing. Let me focus on it. This is a, well, it says it here, extra thin wall mount. So it will only be three and a half centimeters or 1.4 inches from the wall, basically taking that 20 or 25 centimeter that it's now right actually uh, back to about five because it's uh, three and a half centimeters from the thicker part at the back. So that will already win me 15 to 20 centimeters right now. And then if my desk is further back, I've been testing a little bit with moving my chair back and stuff like that. I think that will be fine. Now, as I said, I don't really have much to talk about in this video. I really would like some, uh, some input from you guys, what you would like to see. So for now, let's quickly run through the settings you need to do on a TV to make it a PC input. 
and what settings I'm currently running on the TV for which image quality looks good or great for me. Okay, so image quality in a YouTube video is always going to be very hard to determine. And actually, I still have the uh, protective foam on there, uh, foam, uh, foil on there, because I want to wall mount it tomorrow. And I thought, okay, I'll take it off after that. But even with that foil on there, it looks quite good. I hope you can judge from the video that the, uh, the 444 looks awesome, colors look great. But let's go through the steps to get this a uh, PC input and the monitor into gaming mode so that mouse uh, responsivity or actually image lag is the shortest possible. To do that, we hit the input icon on the remote first and then go to home dashboard. Once you are there, you go here at the top right and go to edit settings. And there you used to need to change this to PC input. I don't think that's necessary anymore because now you can click this icon and there you can select which type of device is connected. In our case, that's a, T, uh, a PC. And you go save and exit and then you leave this menu. And well, then it should enable PC mode, which will uh, disable some of the processing and give you the cleanest image. Okay, let's quickly run through the settings I have it currently set to. So we go to all settings, picture, and let's quickly go to additional settings. Eye comfort mode is off because, well, everything becomes really uh, orange. I don't like that. And then we have HDMI ultra deep color and I have that enabled for the input. You need that to do HDR. Instant game response is on, but I don't think that's gonna do anything, especially with my GTX 1080. Next, we have OLED screensaver. A pixel refresher, you can run a manual pixel refresh, but you shouldn't really do that because the TV should take care of that automatically. Then screen shift, and that is supposed to move pixels around to try and minimize local burn-in. And well, I haven't noticed anything bad with it turned on, so I keep it on for now. And logo luminance adjustment is that something that is static on the screen can be lowered in brightness to kind of try and save those pixels basically. And I have it set to high and I haven't noticed any weird effects or moving things or uh, brightness decreases, which really irritated me. So I keep it on high also. Just very quickly to show, I'm currently on the 30 or 030060 firmware. Back to here, we go into picture mode settings and I have it set to game mode again to make sure that all the uh, input lowering, uh, basically we get the lowest input possible. Contrast is set to 90, brightness is set to 50 and sharpness is set to 10 as I said, because I find that most text on the screen looks best with it at 10 and not at zero because it became a little bit fuzzy. I have color set to 60, but whatever your preference is, that is fine. And in advanced controls, we see that a lot of stuff is grayed out to try and lower input lag. Gamma is set to 2.2, which I believe is standard for the PC. And my white balance color temperature is set to medium because, well, that looked best to me for normal PC colors. Then we also have picture options. Uh, black level is set to auto. You have low, which gives it a more punchy look and high, but I kind of like a little bit of gray in the picture. It looks more natural to me, so I keep it at auto. Motion eye care, I haven't really seen it do anything, uh, but I didn't want it to decrease uh, picture quality, so I have it turned off. And then there's uh, true motion, and I actually have that turned on to low, which looked better to me, especially when moving things around. You can set it to medium, not that much change, and you can set it to high, but this is really flickery in real life, and auto. Now, enabling this does lower brightness a little bit, as you can see, but it's not that bad in my opinion, and I just adjust the brightness level to what I like with it turned on. Speaking of the brightness level, I basically have energy saving set to auto, and as I said, contrast to 90. With it turned off, the screen does actually become quite a bit brighter. You have minimum, medium, and maximum, and well, screen off. 
but I think I like the auto setting. I think it adjusts it sometimes a little bit, but again, it hasn't really bothered me up till now, And but I've only had this thing for a few hours, so it's been fine for me. Okay, now let's look in the NVIDIA control panel. There I have it set to 4K uh, native, 60 hertz, highest color depth, 32 bit, 8 bit per color output, so it's getting 8 bits, 8 bits to the screen, RGB format, so full color, and I have the dynamic range set to full because this is a TV and not a computer monitor, should be, so it should be able to take the full signal. Now for people wondering, but what about the 120 hertz? Well, you can set it to 2560 by 1440 with 120 hertz and still keep RGB or 444 output. And that looks, well, looks excellent. And you probably can't really see it in the video. The smoothness is amazing. And I really, really can't wait until we have 4K 120 hertz with a new video card later in the year. You can also do 4K 120 hertz with HDMI 2.0. But as you can see here, it sets the uh, picture or color output color format to 420. And although it looks okay on uh, images and stuff like that, um, on text, you can really notice it becoming fuzzy and having a much lower resolution. So I don't really like that. And since I have a GTX 1080, I tried some games at uh, 2560, 1440 with 120 Hertz. Sadly, no G-Sync because I have a 10th generation card, but that is really, really awesome. And especially at distance and high moving images, the difference between 4K and 2560 and 4040, it's okay for now. And my video card can't really handle 4K anyway, at, especially at higher than 60 FPS. So for now, that works out great. And well, that's really it uh, for this video and what I wanted to show you. As I said, I'm probably going to mount it to the wall tomorrow to get that more uh, space from me to the screen. And well, as I said, what would you like to know? What would you like to see about this screen? And uh, what would you like me to test with the current setup I have? In the future, I plan on doing tests with 4K, 120 Hertz, HDR, and which kind of HDMI cables can you use? Can you use old HDMI 1.0 cables or standard definition or whatever? Or do you really need a new cable? Uh, currently, I'm using the purple 3 meters uh, uh, HDMI 2.1 48 gigabit cable you saw in my latest Quinbox episode. And that's been working fine for me, as I said. Um, I'm quite picky in regards to monitors. I've always run IPS monitors because I really can't stand the VA and the color drop off uh, if you're not sitting directly in front of it. There's no such issue with the OLED. And well, there's of course one topic left to discuss in this video, and that's burn-in. Aren't you afraid of burn-in? Well, yes and no. Um, I accept the fact that it's a given that it probably will burn in at some point. But on the other hand, I don't mind using a hiding taskbar. I already have had moving background images which uh, change every now and then. Uh, I use a wallpaper engine for that, uh, but they change now and then anyway to all kinds of different effects and stuff. And so that's not really a problem. And in the end, I'll have another, my old 4K monitor here on the side. So maybe things like uh, Task Manager, which I like to keep open, I'll move to, to that monitor uh, and then they can stay in a single spot. And for the rest, everything I do, I do a Word, a PowerPoint, I, I design PCBs, I play some video games, I watch some movies. I do lots of varied stuff. So I'm actually not that worried about it. Other users online either report it's fine or it's horrible. I'm just gonna see and I'll give you updates every few months if you guys would like to like how burned in is your screen right now. Uh, but I think it'll be fine. And if not, well, lessons learned. So that's going to be it for now. Video is long enough already. Again, let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to test or try something. And well, otherwise, thank you for watching. And I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye-bye.